Hi, everybody, and thanks a lot for uh, the opportunity to uh, speak in the seminar. So, all right, so this is, uh, so today I'm gonna talk about some, uh, well, uh, distance estimates uh, for, for, for asymptotically Euclidean manifolds. So well, in the first part, I will just uh, recall some basic definitions and then and then in the uh, second part, I will I will uh, state some questions that uh, are gonna uh, serve as a let's say as a uh, guide for, for 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 our talk. And then in the third part, I, I will state our main, main results. And then finally, in the fourth part, I, I will I will sketch uh, well some of the ideas that uh, we, that we used for for uh, proving our estimates. So maybe one uh, thing that I uh, want to say right away is that this is all uh, joint work uh, with uh, Rudolf Zeidler. This is Zeidler. Okay. I mean, it will, it will be clear anyway, but I just I just want to say it. Um, all right, uh, all right. So well, okay. So first of all, again, uh, the the main topic is going to be uh, we're going to discuss, of course, uh, scalar curvature. Uh, so I just in a first screen, I just introduced the main actor, which is uh, well, just uh, the the weakest. I mean, everybody actually in this room knows what the scalar curvature, scalar curvature is. Is the uh, weakest uh, well curvature invariant then can be attached uh, uh, at least pointwise to a manifold is, uh, well, one of the ways to look at it is the uh, trace of the uh, Ricci tensor. Um, now, there are two main uh, methods uh, to, to study uh, this topic. So, um, okay, maybe let me use some colors. Uh, uh, so the uh, first, the, the, so one is the Dirac operator method. So this, uh, this is what, this was initiated by uh, Sati and Singer and is based on the, uh, pro, on the, on the spectral properties of the uh, spinor Dirac operator. And then the main restriction of this is that uh, yeah, it's smaller. Uh, you need the manifold to be spin. And the second method is the minimal upper surface method. And uh, uh, this uh, is due to Shane Yao, and uh, this is based on the spectral properties of the uh, conformal Laplacian on a stable uh, minimal upper surface. And the main limitation, of course, is the dimensional one. So the, it works up to dimension seven, well, up to dimension eight. Uh, I mean, it can be extended to, to up to dimension eight and plus, I mean, anyway, so it's a long story that I, I will, I will skip. I want to mention this just to say that uh, this gives an idea of the reason why, uh, so what are the limitations of the theorems that, that I'm gonna present. Um, all right, so now uh, let me uh, first, uh, well, introduce the notion of um, a, 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 a asymptotically Euclidean manifold. So they take M uh, to be a smooth n-dimensional Riemannian manifold, then uh, an open set E um, is uh, is called a asymptotically Euclidean end of order tau uh, greater than n minus two over two. If well, first of all, the scalar curvature of G uh, belongs uh, is uh, integrable uh, on E, and second, uh, if there exists a diffeomorphism um, between E and uh, the Euclidean space minus minus a disk um, in such a way, well. Once you have these, then you can compare the, the metric on E with the uh, uh, flat Euclidean one. And then uh, what you want is that, uh, well, the difference between the metric on E and, and the Euclidean one uh, satisfies, uh, well, this uh, uh, decay uh, condition with uh, fall off uh, tau, uh, where, well, uh, C, um, well, 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 where this uh, denotes the space of uh, well, uh, twice differential functions with a weight uh, tau. I mean, you can see the definition from here. Okay. Uh, now, uh, and now uh, we say that the manifold uh, M uh, is asymptotically Euclidean if uh, there exists a bounded set uh, such that the complement of it uh, is a finite union of asymptotically Euclidean ends, uh, E1, uh, En. 
uh, all right so here is uh, well my uh, beautiful picture of, of the situation uh, so um, so here i drew a picture of an asymptotically euclidean end and uh, that is this guy over here and and here i drew a picture of a complete asymptotically euclidean manifold uh, with three uh, with three ends now uh, once, uh, of course, you once you fix uh, such a diffeomorphism phi between a asymptotically Euclidean end and uh, Rn minus a disk, then uh, you have uh, asymptotically Euclidean coordinates uh, x1, xn, and you have a radial coordinate. And now we use this to define uh, the ADMS. Uh, the, I just uh, want to uh, recall the definitions. So the uh, ADMS uh, of a Asymptotical Euclidean end uh, is defined as what well, as the limit of of this of this quantity. I mean, here I actually again for for this talk I I, I would uh, so the the, the important uh, part of the story. I mean, of course, here as you can see, uh, so this uh, is is going to be a, a sphere of radius r with respect to the asymptotic Euclidean coordinates. And uh, so, 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 so this means basically that uh, the ADM mass uh, is, a, um, a, is defined just by using the geometry at infinity of, of, uh, of, the, of the asymptotic Euclidean net. So in other words, it doesn't change if you change the geometry in some compact set. Uh, now, uh, this limit uh, exists, and this is uh, due to the fact that we're assuming that the Scalar coverage is integrable, plus that we have the right fall off, uh, and is independent uh, of the choice of the uh, asymptotic Euclidean coordinates by uh, results by Bartnik and, uh, and Crucial. Um, all right, so here I, I drew a picture of, of the uh, modal spaces, so, so that are the Schwarzschild spaces. So those are spaces on, uh, well, on uh, Sn uh, times zero to infinity. And then, uh, so here, so you see that you take the Schwarzschild, uh, Schwarzschild metric, and then, uh, so, 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 so this family of metrics have the, uh, have the property that uh, the scalar curvature is zero and the ADM mass is M. And now, uh, so this is the um, Schwarzschild space of positive mass, uh, well, uh, here is the zero mass one, uh, which is just Rn. And here there is the Schwarzschild space of negative mass. So this is uh, incomplete. Uh, all right. So now uh, let me um, formulate the positive. May I ask, yeah. ask a question, yeah? Yes. May I ask you, because this is a definition, of course, for geometry is unacceptable, this kind of definition. But what I may say, that because there is this Euclidean structure, you can average over that. And if, uh, if after averaging, this always gives you Schwarzschild metric, and then it will be ODM, this mass for the Schwarzschild metric, or it's something else. Because this definition, ad hoc definition, because, you know, we cannot take it. Yeah? I mean, it's, you, you mean, it's you mean this one? It has no meaning, whatever. Right? You, you mean this, you, Schwarzschild, you, you, of course, is okay, because especially symmetric, it's unique canonical metric with certain symmetry, it's, uh, and mass zero. and, and uh, you, you, you mean I'm this? Sorry, but it's connection very poor, so I have to say a few times. You, you, you mean this? Sorry, I. Because you, you my mean... understanding, secret, is that this corresponds to a conformal change. This would correspond to the term if it were kind of now in, in local coordinates in, as zero, it would be smooth metric. It would be exactly the term of the scaly curvature at this point. Is it this exactly that or something else? Uh, so if if I I mean yeah. if so, I, so what is uh, in, in the in, in meaning of that? Oh well, right. there might be say, I am pretty certain there must be invariant interpretation of that. Yeah, yeah. So so the so the well so the so the so the idea is exactly that if you take uh, I mean different uh, coordinates, then I mean this this limit is actually the same. So that that's that's I mean this is a result by Bartnik and Crucial. No, but usually, I mean, it's different coordinates mean Pythagorean theorem, come on. Everything is there is Pythagorean theorem. It takes some, so this sum, the diagonal sum of this trace, or this trace, all trace say equal, this is Pythagorean theorem. I, I, it's, 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 I, I understand that. I guess so, right? If it's correct quantity, depending on the flexibility. So you see, one point is that as we know, 
that say this mass, at least when the limit is towards the metric, you don't need second or first derivative to be actually small. It's just it's enough for metric themselves to be small, right? It's already true. Therefore, I'm questioning already the necessity of flatness for second or first order derivatives. Just for matrix is enough, right? As follows again from them, the Goethe the minimal theorem applied to this case, right? Therefore, already it's so we question about this condition of symmetrically flatness so as I needed in, in basic examples. And secondly, if you make this condition, this means something infinitesimally. If you make a formal change, it becomes linear algebra really for the for the standard metric, just first and second derivatives of a metric. Therefore, it must be a guess. It must be expressible in terms of first and second derivative with the point, which means curvature. And this must be just scaled the curvature of, of usual metric. If you make it conformal change, it becomes not infinity of Euclidean space, but point in the sphere. Because conformally, right, Euclidean space is the same as sphere. Take conformal change, become complement to the point, and you just make that. And this something written in some in, in particular coordinates. So there might be simple interpretation, not just big, some big theorem. Again, from, from geometry point of view, it's just something completely misuse of notations. Right? For physicists, it's their business. But for us, it's misuse of notations. So what are the right notations? In the right coordinate system, this becomes something simple. It's just wrong coordinate system, and this becomes something we don't recognize. Change coordinate system, and it becomes something very simple. Question is, what are this coordinate system? What are the, what the answer? And again, question number one. If you average of the sphere in Euclidean geometry, does it converge all to Schwarz's metric with the same mass? Yes, average. You have this metric asymptotically flat. There is Euclidean geometry that underlies average of these rotations. Do we get Schwarz's metric? Okay. I, up up to maybe high order term, which will disappear. Maybe, maybe there's some high order terms. All right, so two. Another question, if you make conformal change and make Euclidean infinity become complement to a point, and then and then become with local coordinates at the point, either this will be just scaling coverage at this point? It's yes, an well, obvious question. You can't leave it like that, you have a geometrist. You have to understand what the hell it is. And, and thought you there is, of course, log harm theorem saying that you always can deform it if some is past positive or negative, it just corresponds to the fact you can deform it and make it flat at infinity, which is, of course, has very simple interpretation. Yeah. Okay. At least for case of a spherical rotation, a symmetric metric such, such, such as Schwarz or symptotic to Schwarz. You see, so there are this obvious thing you have to know. And once you answer them, many things become redundant, become just obvious, right? So, you see, my, my part of this, all this activity here, it means fighting with wrong coordinates. This is my impression. Because the key example, namely of that of asymptotically Schwarzschild, is everything covered by, by Goethe's minimal theorem. And all this kind of discussion become rather absurd, yeah? Because it gives you a much better result immediately. So, and you don't need these conditions. You need much weaker conditions. So you have to understand this inequality. Or this expression, I'm sorry. What, what it is. Of course, it's in the violin. Fees is not idiots. They're all that for some of their purpose. But we have other kind of purposes. We have to kind of clarify this point, not, right, not repeating after them uh, these formulas, but understanding them intrinsically. What it means intrinsically. In, 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 in right, for example, so the two questions. First, what happens uh, after spherical average if you get Schwarz? And secondly, what happens when you use con conformal change? You, on, on the Euclidean background, you just go to the complement to a point. So everything becomes written at one point. So what is this metric at one point? Uh, to to be honest, you know, it doesn't change. Uh, as far as Dirac operator, it changes nothing. The same, the same, uh, so it will be some Dirac operator with singularity at, at one point. And this we understand perfectly well what our solution of, Laplace, of, of Dirac equation when once with, uh, with point singularities. It's perfectly understood. We don't need written, it's just like obvious stuff. Or it's really different, or it is the same in different coordinates. This is my question. Is written argument is the same as just Dirac operator, just with one pole singularity or with some particular irregularity at one point? See? Well, there are other kind of asymptotic behavior, but this one is very suspicious. 
Look, very suspicious, and then say, well, we, everything I'm saying is not true, and none of this is true, and then build the justification of that. But first, you have to realize that why it is. Can you answer one of these questions? First, about averaging. What happens after averaging if you get all this force geometry up to high order term? So, so everything reduces to Schwarz plus high order term, right? And then we know just everything is we have much better results anyway. Very, very, very simple, you don't need much of what is said. And secondly, what happens if you take conformal change, canonical conformal change, Euclidean space to the complement to a point in the Euclidean space? And everything becomes this local. To, to be honest, I should think about it. I mean, I. I, I, I because without that, it just completely looks like a You see, I, I have an experience with the following kind that there was some question and some substitute of, of somebody of uh, some trying to solve it and couldn't solve and prove some theorem. And then some great analyst who now is not alive said he's come to count the example. Some transformation is not kind of polynomial or not rational, and he has count example. And he wrote 10 pages of computations. And unfortunately, this uh, uh, David Epstein, when she found he just wrote you know, one over x in in in, in a cylindrical coordinates, something with transcendental. <laughs> you see, so I don't trust this kind of formulas. I just don't believe the formula has made any meaning. It's just if it's right formula, or you just see it in in raw coordinates. There are two kind of coordinates you can use it. One just uh, something coming after averaging. You compare not to the plot metric and the one after averaging. The this Euclidean this. Uh, Riemannian metric and subtracting this uh, part of the Schwarz type, right? So it's just yes, deviations from Sch 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 Schwarz actually the Schwarz type. And uh, this, what, what is there is just uh, the ADM for Schwarz, which of course are not ambiguous. And secondly, if it's what happens in for conformal change at one point. And just what, what happens to this expression? If you write in, in poly coordinates at one point. And how we can leave, how we can use this formula without understanding that, right? Yeah. For me, it's just impossible. Of course, it's there are other interpretations of this mass, whatever, but they're all done by physicists. Uh, they haven't seen any mathematician really systematically looking at that, so to be to, be, to make it 100% clear, right? Covering, responding to these two questions. Maybe, maybe the answer is negative, but you have to know that, right? Without that, we cannot, we cannot be, be satisfied, yeah. So because even are... either of them is positive, which makes much of what is done kind of completely meaningless redundant. You see. So uh, there is a comment in yeah. in the chat that uh, it can be interpreted as a flux of scalar curvature. So as what? As as, as the flux. Frank scalar curvature. Yeah. So. It wouldn't be exact to scale the equation poly coordinates if you order conformal change to one point. This is a specific, very simple question. Take this canonical inversion of Euclidean metric, and so it becomes infinity, become one point. So what happens to you to this metric? This metric will become a perturbation of the flat metric at one point, but you do not see infinity smooth, but probably C2 smooth. So it will be C2 smooth metric, remaining a metric at a point. So this expression. Would it be just scaly curvature at this point? Or not? Maybe we <laughs> postpone the discussion um, after, the, for after the talk. Yeah, after. Maybe, um, I, have to be, yeah. I, will run, I will run so much faster because after that, because connection has some limitation. I have a limit how I can use it, even this poor connection. But this is always, I feel very uncomfortable with that. Yeah, but certainly unable to make this competition. Right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not good for that. Yeah, yeah. But, but I don't dare to write expression which I don't understand the meaning of this because somebody else wrote it. Okay, I apologize. Yeah, I feel very, kind of, all my life, I feel very bad about this expression. <laughs> I don't you could explain me what it is. Yeah. I apologize for kind of sticking with it. Okay. For me, so, so is it okay to think about Schwarz and this is symptotically Schwarz or not? Or it's crucial, it's not Schwarz. It's not perturbation of Schwarz, but something else. I mean, it, it can always be, uh, I mean, at least, uh, I mean, there, there are some canonical 
uh, ways to 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 make it uh, asymptotic to Schwarzschild. Mm -hmm. uh, Canonical meaning perturbative way. Canonical using linear perturbation or change of coordinates. How canonical? No, no, no. It doesn't have to be rotationally symmetric in infinity at the same order as Schwarzschild. You can have a little bit of tangential variation. So in order to make it asymptotic to Schwarzschild to a higher order, you actually have to change the metric. Of course, no, no, no. I agree. You have, to, you have to change the metric by, to, by solving perturbation for linear problem. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to actually, it, it would be a different metric. Of course, what I'm saying, you can average, for example. You make it uh, uh, averaging over rotation and look at the perturbation term with the perturbation uh, over rotation in symmetric metric, so it's will be, and the perturbation is short. So well, it change you change the metric. If you average the metric, surely you get something that's asymptotic to Schwarzschild, just because that's what happens to the metric. The question is whether this expression is then has the same value. Yes, right. That would right. and and that would be pretty easy to check because it, it's just a linear kind of expression. I mean, it seems just a matrix or something. Yeah, exactly. This is my question. Yeah, even it has the yeah. same way, right? Exactly, this is my question. Yeah. I right. wonder if that method of averaging could be used to gain insight or imp improve or something in the proofs of Bartnick and Crushiel, or whether they considered that. Yeah, yeah. This is about it might even it might even be that that is how they did it. Yes, exactly. It may be implicit so, in what people. Has anyone read exactly. their proofs? So there I mean, are two I questions. I got, what happens? About, I got halfway through one. Through yeah, one there are two one. questions. One, what happens after averaging, and, and second, what happens with a conversion? And see it, it's what happened at one point in in, 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 in invert, invert again with the inversion thing. All of, you know that's been studied to death. It's just that I think no one at this listening knows the answer off the top of their head. Mm -hmm. But okay, exactly. definitely, yeah, okay. if you look at the way that the whole thing is analyzed when when Shun and Yao did the higher dimensional case, yeah, I mean yeah. they have all these terms and you know quadratic forms and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, it, I just, just I just don't know what's in those papers. I read about half of it. Yeah, but you see, but my skepticism is justified by the fact that you, if you, if you are asymptotic reversal, you don't need asymptotic with derivatives. It's just enough asymptotic informatic itself. And the conclusion holds, you see? And therefore, this makes me skeptical Lower about order. The, the, yeah. other, other stuff. And it was never kind of uh, keep, keep people keep repeating, even in Schwarzschild case, in the original papers in Bush You need first and second derivatives, but you do know you don't need first derivative at all. The a priori a posteriori follows from this you know, from Dirac operator and uh, argument different from more, more kind of fundamental than we can just uh, this kind of it's actually even you don't need I'm afraid you don't even need. You don't need even fully need them go to them refer that's enough, maybe just a regional la roof or something. Yeah, some basic estimate for the Dirac operator on this field. And again, you know, in the moment you return to, came to one point, you have well understood in general theory for elliptic operators for the for, for the solution with individual local singularities. Right? You perfectly know what happened there. You don't need uh, specifically consider this question and become immediately generalized and, and kind of very analytical. Geometry kind of disappears from fully from the just parametrics. You write parametrics at one point and immediately to give you all information. Even if operator is not CC infinity smooth on the C2 parametric still makes sense. So this is what, what, what I'm saying. That what little I know of analysis is not fully kind of exhibited here. It is, I feel uncomfortable for it because I must say, I cannot add anything to that. I only can ask questions. Okay, I'm sorry again for this interruption. It's, uh, but this is exactly what we, I, I, we, I think we have to learn. We, we have the ADA mass and we have to understand what they are, not just uh, keeping repeating them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I see this expression many times. For me, it's nothing, it's just symbols on the, on the paper. That's it. <laughs> Right, they're not related to how the mathematics we know. Okay, this is my kind of frustration about that. It's not. Okay, let's continue. Uh, yeah. Okay, I apologize no. to the speaker. No, no, I mean, no, no, of course. Uh, 
Mm. No, I think many of us have the same feeling. I think I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, uh, all right, so let, let me, uh, okay, so, so let me, uh, I mean, remind the 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 Riemannian uh, positive mass. Uh, well, so this is, I mean, if you take a uh, complete uh, asymptotic Euclidean manifold, uh, well, the measurement is three, then um, uh, which has well non-negative scalar curvature, then uh, the ADM mass of uh, of each end uh, must be. Must be non-negative. So, 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 so this is uh, again. You, I mean, you're relating this this uh, uh, quantity that is localized at infinity to to to, uh, to to the to the global geometry of the manifold, which which is given exactly by the non-negative of the scalar curvature. And uh, okay, so this, this theorem was 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 proved by by Shen Yao, and the, there, there is a spin version of it. Uh, I, I, for up to dimension seven in the spin setting, um, the proof is due to within. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, and uh, I mean, the topic that I want to discuss today is well, uh, so to, to which extent uh, this theorem can be can be uh, can be localized. So so. Um, in other words, if you start with a well, not necessarily complete uh, Riemannian manifold and take E to be an asymptotically Euclidean end, then you might ask which conditions on the metric G would imply that uh, the mass is non negative. And then, of course, we saw already that, uh, of course, the scalar curvature should be non negative alone is, is not. Enough as is shown by by the by the existence of uh, well, uh, Schwarzschild -Schwarz spaces of uh, negative mass. So, and uh, okay, so then uh, the um, uh, the uh, uh, so 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 as a again as a problem that I, I, I want to question that I want to consider. Um, as a, again, a sort of a guide is that uh, well, uh, if you take M, uh, well, it's a positive mass conjecture with arbitrary ends. In other words, a obvious. Uh, I mean, the first uh, uh, assumption that you want to make is that the other ends of the manifolds are are are, are complete. Um, so, in other words, take any. Uh, 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 an arbitrary complete Riemannian manifold, uh, which which has dimension at least three, and which has non-negative scalar curvature. Then, uh, given uh, a single asymptotic Euclidean end, uh, then the conjecture is, is that uh, the ADM mass uh, must be must be non-negative as well. Uh, I mean, the picture is clear now. That uh, so, so so in other words, we we. We ask whether uh, okay. Uh, what 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 what's sitting here? Um, and 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 on, on this actually, I I I want to uh, point out a recent uh, resu result by Lesur Ungaria. Um, so take M uh, to be a well. Uh, a manifold uh, which is uh, asymptotic to Schwarzschild, but that is not assumed to be to be complete. Um, and then uh, suppose that you have two neighborhoods uh, of infinity. Uh, well, with the property of the closure of u two sits inside u one. Moreover, uh, suppose that uh, there exists a positive constant. Uh, with the property that uh, well, G has no points of incompleteness in the D neighborhood of U1. I mean, I will draw a picture in one minute, and then the second condition is that the scalar curvature is non-negative in the D neighborhood of U1, and the condition number two is that the scalar curvature satisfies this uh, largeness condition over here, so that it is greater than well, 
in this quantity. Uh, and then, then this quantity uh, on the closure of U1 minus uh, U2. Then under this condition, then you have that the ADM mass is, must be, must be non-negative. So let me show a picture of this. So in, in other words, in the theorem of Le uh, Souchene Yao, uh, I mean, this is uh, the uh, asymptotic Euclidean end, and then, um, and then you have that, uh, um, um, well, uh, so, so, so this is the neighborhood uh, U2, and, uh, and this is the neighborhood uh, U1. And uh, so what, what's written here is that uh, you assume, if you assume that the scalar curvature is non-negative in the asymptotic Euclidean end, and is, uh, well, satisfies this condition on this set, uh, uh, then um, uh, 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 then uh, this gives you a upper bound for uh, for 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 a neighborhood of of u two uh, if uh, you have no points of incompleteness. I'm sorry, I, I need. Uh, okay, yes. Um, okay, so um, yeah, I uh, and then. Uh, so maybe let, let me sh sh show you the theorem again. Okay. Uh, so 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 in other words, if uh, 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 the, the scalar curvature is still uh, non-negative in a in a D neighborhood where D satisfies this assumption, then the ADM must must be must be non-negative. Yeah. So um, all right, and uh, and then in particular this this. Uh, um, will imply uh, that uh, well uh, that uh, uh, this, this in particular implies the the uh, uh, the positive mass theorem with uh, arbitrary ends in the case where the end e is is uh, uh, asymptotic as function and uh, the reason is that uh, you can you can always uh, this is a a classical result of, of Shane Yao that you can always uh, make a conformal change uh, uh, in the uh, asymptotic Euclidean end uh, in, in, in such a way that uh, the scalar curvature is uh, strictly positive. In a... Okay, so they show the conformal change you can turn, extend it to complete, and to make that create another end. What? No, that, but the, so, so what the, what it shows that you 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 can make a conformal change in a way that uh, the scalar curvature becomes strictly positive in some neighborhood, and then now you can since you know that the other ends are complete, you can always take d large enough in such a way that uh, this condition is going to be satisfied, and uh, and therefore by the previous theorem this implies that the ADM mass must be negative. So you can create new new Euclidean end. New uh, 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 yes, yes. You you change you, you change the metric in the in uh -huh. the in the uh, yes exactly. So in, in a the conformal change. Mm -hmm. Yes, you make a conformal change and, uh, and and you 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 can make it positive and and uh, yes <clears throat> and then and then you you would you would get a a, a a contradiction by the fact that you can take D as large as you want, because you know that the other ends are complete. And it is, is there an example, it's an equality is sharp or not? Uh, that, that's, that's actually the main point that uh, I wanted to, to discuss. But, but, but anyway, this is unknown. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and indeed, this, this was the, I mean, the reason why uh, we, so th this is what we were interested in and we, don't know uh, yet with how, how to get a sharp inequality, to, but uh, uh, but of course uh, anyway. So I, I will show what we can do in the in the, in the spin setting. Okay. Do we have a better inequality? We we uh, yes, but but again. Uh, so 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 we do. I I, I, will, I will state maybe since I have twenty five minutes. I think I will maybe 
skip some part and go directly to the to the main theorems. Otherwise, I I I I'm not sure. So Simone, if you if you wish, you can have um, a little more time. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, I'm sorry, I took uh, your time. Uh, sorry, I apologize. I took your time. Yeah, yeah no, that's that's no yeah. problem. Yeah, so you can have ten more minutes. Well, but uh, I think as, as, as you wish. I can, I can, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, so actually, I mean, the the so 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 the point that I want to make is that, of course, uh, for for me, for me, Rudy, this so the so the, the idea was was to sort of, I mean, this 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 kind of this kind of. Uh, um, metric inequality is, is a, I mean, the idea was to make an analogy with what happens on on on, on bands, and then try try to apply the techniques that we already developed, and uh, you know, to, to the to the case of the uh, asymptotic Euclidean uh, manifolds. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, well, here, I mean, I uh, put a lot of slides on motivations on. With examples on bands and so on and so forth, but maybe I can really skip it. I, I think otherwise uh, it take, takes take, takes too long. But uh, so the 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 main part. But 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 by the way, all right. Don't, I I I want to make this point so that uh, so the so these inequalities on bands are, are well. Uh, the, the main inequality that is of course on on toggle bands. I mean. I'm just giving some basic statements to 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 motivate. Okay, so 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 this is due this is due to Gromov. I mean, the idea is that I mean, uh, on a toggle band, you know that you cannot have well, uniformly positive uh, a complete PSC, which means that uh, uh, I mean the geometry I mean must collapse, and uh, I mean if you you cannot extend it indefinitely, and then uh, in particular, well, uh, so 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 this is this is the the um this is the uh, upper bound for the width that was found by by Gromov in 2018 and moreover uh, actually uh, uh, by by uh, again this is this, this constant is optimal again by by um examples by by uh, by by Gromov and uh, an example I will paper by laws three this is modeled by paper which have by loss in 83. It's not my example, it's actually from our joint paper with loss. This metric was there. Oh, all right. I, I, I just learned it from your paper. I didn't yeah, know. but it's already not that it's very okay. old. Yeah. And yes. before, possibly was done before. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I, I just, like yeah, I just learned it from your paper. And, uh, oh, okay, so, so, sorry. Okay. So, so <clears throat> uh, then, uh, well, uh, I mean, this. Uh, by the way, so 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 this inequality is 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 well, uh, is obtained by 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 using um, um, by using the mu upper surface method. I mean, more precisely, uh, well, mu bubbles. That those are I'm sure that are uh, due to Gromov. <laughs> uh, you know, this for this case, you don't need bubbles. Bubbles need. For more general theorem, here you use the just minimum surfaces with boundary. All oh, right, all right, all right. But, and, but indeed, and this and is the just... point is because if you accept paper version Yao, then formally it works for all dimensions. And bubbles, well, this is need something more. Yeah, yes, because, because yes, yes, sure, 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 yes. Right. Um, the and the... Yeah. You, you mean, you mean the. I mean, about singularities. They yes. about singular, yeah, yeah. They're done. And, 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 yeah, and except no. a specific theorem in the paper then would imply for all dimensions. And for bubbles, it doesn't. It's not like that. When you need a generalization of the lemma. Yes, yes. Because you can, I guess, uh, slice down to dimension two in this case. Yeah, to use dimension two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And uh, well, in in the in the. Uh, I mean, Again, this now. If you go into the Dirac uh, world, then uh, I mean, you can you can uh, find. I mean, sim I mean, a a anyway. So the the main point of of this. Uh, so I'm I'm sorry. I got a little bit. Uh, I lost a little bit of concentration. So focus. Let let me. Yeah, I, 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 but I was, yeah. Sorry, I was. Let, let, I... Let, let, let me get 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 back to this. So so the the so the main point here is the following: that if you take actually a. a 
uh, I mean, uh, Riemannian band, I mean, where N is, well, suppose it is just a, a, a manifold with non-vanishing heterogeneous, then, uh, well, this is due to, to myself and, and Rudolf Seidler. Um, then uh, you, you, you get uh, actually, you know, the same estimate. I mean, this is, again, so the main point of this estimate is not, I mean, that what what must happen to the to the to the geometry is clear because because you you cannot have something that is you know uniformly scalar curvature is uniformly positive and complete, but the, but but the main point is that this upper bound uh, only depends on the dimension of the manifold and uh, on the on the positive lower bound of the of the scalar curvature. So that that's the main the, that's the main point here. Um, and now, uh, but uh, the 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 Sorry, I I, I I I lost a little bit of focus. I, I want to make a, an observation about the, uh, the so the in the what what I find it interesting of, of this theorem of the um, sur Ungheri Yao. So let me go back to it. Uh, is that uh, as as you see from here, actually they 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 uh, they have positivity only so so on, only here and then. And and then and then uh, the 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 idea is that uh, if you have if you have positivity in a let's say geometrically relevant region, this must have some some uh, global effect on on the on the geometry domain. And and then uh, if you translate it into into bands, uh, you get uh, uh, you get this. Um, so you, you you get the following principle. So. You again. You know that uh, the, the, there is no metric um, on a on a band such whose core is either a torus or something with non-vanishing heterogeneous. And then, so you know that. Uh, uh, so if the scalar curvature is, is is so 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 you know that there is no uh, complete metric whose scalar curvature is is positive along some some neighborhood of n times zero. Let's say. And uh, and now uh, the the so the idea uh, so the principle of of the uh, this this metric inequalities of Lesur Ungareyao translated to bands uh, would give the following thing so that there exists a constant that that depends again only so suppose now that you have an a, a neighborhood Y with uh, such that the scalar curvature is positive uh, strictly positive on this on, on such a neighborhood. Uh, and then you know that that the, the, the scalar curvature is uh, just non-negative everywhere else. Uh, this still gives you a a, a, a constant that uh, depends only on sigma and on the width of y, uh, such that the distance between the so, so in other words, in other words, the positivity in a neighborhood of of, of a core. Uh, this already uh, implies that the geometry of the band must must to, uh, I mean that the that that uh, the manifold that the band has to close up at uh, a certain distance. Uh, but, 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 but what about the other part? It's still positive curvature. What what is what you say about outside? The, 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 the rest is just on is, is so. In other words, if you have uh, is the scalar curvature is uniformly positive. In a in a neighborhood of, of the core, and non negative every everywhere else. Non negative see, everywhere. Okay. Yeah, you you see you see you still get an upper bound. The answer must be something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so this so you have still the say the same the same the same kind of uh, uh, phenomenon that the manifold is going to close up. Okay. No, no, but 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 but, 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 but if you if you speak about the Euclidean ends. You don't you know, any positive non negative curvature has implication. You have to say something else. You, I think, you, because if you no, have no, a the, non negative scalar curvature, you know, it's logically Euclidean ends, then that something is true. And now you say you add some condition. No, 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 no. What, the band okay. and what you what condition you remove now. No, no, no. Now I'm, I'm just talking about a band. I mean, I'm just talking about a Euclidean band. So this, this, uh, I, I'm just saying that the ah, okay, I see. principle of of Lesur Ungareyao, this actually 
gives you just a upper bound for the distance between, uh, let's say, a neighborhood which has uh, where the scalar curvature is uniformly positive, and the 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 uh, boundaries of 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 a band over n. That that does not say. Something about the boundaries of the ends. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking just. This is just a Euclidean, a Riemannian band. That, that's what it is. And then I want well, to Riemannian bands. You know, yeah, because you know there is a statement when the band doesn't have to be positive. It has, there is a certain distribution of curvature along the band. You know, there are some properties that don't have to be positive, right? It's written in my paper. There is more or less necessary in sufficient condition how curvature can be distributed along the bands. Mm. It's necessary yeah. and sufficient, more or less, sharp condition. Because again, for spherically simple, for, for torical beds, yeah, I wouldn't say for all beds, but torical beds. Or like torical, because the, uh, the argument doesn't require curve, it should be uh, just uh, positive. It's enough to be kind of greater than some function of the distance to the say, to the ends, right? Yes, yes, yes. I I know I know and I know very well this. Yeah, but you he here have something else. Because you don't impose any topological condition on the bed. No, 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 no. The, to, the topological condition is, is the usual one. Take either. I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that that this is, let's say, I mean, on a band, what the what so so if you translate to bands what they do on asymptotically Euclidean okay. manifolds, this is what you get. But 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 they don't have topological condition on the band, and they do. The, the topological condition is going to be in. I mean, they uh, on 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 a, on a on a. All right. So I, I I will. All right. So if maybe let me let me go, go. So basically, if you take a bend, then the topological condition is, for example, the uh, some some um, non-vanishing index on the core, uh, or, or I mean, for example, if you if you if you if you have a torus, right? Yeah, if at all, but they don't have the case, but they may have spherical end. Yes, but 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 then of course you get a condition on the adian mass. Okay. That's, okay. That's, 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 that's the point. So in a in a in a in a sense, the let's say I mean the analogy would be that uh, it, even if it's not very precise, uh, okay. said it in this way, but it's it's like if instead of having a non-zero index. Let's say the uh, having a negative mass uh, gives you actually okay okay topological constraint. Yes, it, 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 but 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 again, it's it's more quantitative. It's not exactly topological. I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but but anyway, so so I I I, I, I was just making a comparison with something that uh, I hope that uh, the this band business I think is more um, is is. Yeah, so so I was just making a comparison here, and uh, and then and then now I, I I want to go to the main question that I well the first but actually let's say the main question because I, otherwise we we, don't, we never finish uh, that that I want to discuss on uh, asymptotic Euclidean manifolds. Um, so the setting is that uh, you take and now I want to work on on uh, on. Uh, Asymptotically, uh, asymptotically Euclidean uh, Riemannian spin manifold with uh, compact boundary, and then I I assume that I have uh, well, uh, so this is exactly the picture that I drew here, so that, that I have uh, codimension zero sub manifolds uh, again with compact boundary with the property that uh, X zero contains all uh, asymptotically uh, Euclidean ends. Of course, in in this picture, the, there is only one. So, Moreover, I assume that the scalar curvature is not negative, and uh, I assume that it's uniformly positive on on some, well, on uh, uh, basically on this region. So on uh, uh, x one minus minus x zero, and then the question is whether uh, you can you can localize the with a method to relate the uh, distance between the boundary of x zero and uh, uh, and the boundary of X, so the boundary of X is going to be those two guys. So I want to relate uh, this uh, distance uh, to the ADM mass 
uh, of of uh, um, okay in this case there is only one end okay all right so now uh, let, let me uh, now state the 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 our our main main uh, uh, results uh, so so suppose that uh, x uh, is a well n dimensional uh, complete asymptotic euclidean spin manifold uh, which has uh, no negative scalar curvature and compact boundary. I mean, this is actually the conditions, the same conditions. Then suppose that uh, you have, uh, you know, again, uh, X0 sits sit inside X1. So those are, this is sort of a partition of, of the, of the uh, asymptotic Euclidean manifold. And then uh, I'm going to assume that the scalar curvature now, I write, I wrote the, 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 the scalar curvature condition a little bit more precisely. Uh, so this is uh, uniformly positive on uh, x1 minus x0. And then uh, suppose that uh, d uh, is the distance uh, between, so in other words, d is the distance between the boundary of x0 and boundary of x1. So this is d and uh, l is the distance between uh, the boundary of x1 and the boundary of x. Uh, all right. So now in this in this, in this situation, uh, okay. Then I will explain it very more more, more precisely. In the in, in this situation, we have the following the following thing. So uh, that uh, well, suppose that uh, uh, so here we define this function. Okay, and uh, so here, in, in other words, so what, what's written here is the following thing that, uh, uh, so first of all, uh, if D, so D is the distance between those, those two boundary components. Uh, so notice that uh, if this is achieved, uh, then you have that Lambda D is gonna uh, blow up. So in other words, this, this, is a absolute upper bound for this region, assuming that the scalar curvature is greater or equal than uh, a certain constant. Okay, and this is exactly the, the same. The same. Uh, th this just follows from 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 the usual uh, um, upper bound for bands. Okay, so now if this is not achieved, uh, then uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, well, uh, then we go here, and then we, this is the condition on L. So in other words, again, if uh, this is achieved, then uh, this function is gonna is is gonna blow up. So in other words, now this is the precise estimates, okay? And then the precise estimate is that uh, uh, if uh, none of those two conditions are, are satisfied. So then if the mean curvature is greater or equal than minus this function, so if the mean curvature uh, of, of the boundary, so over here, uh, dominates minus this function, uh, then uh, the ADM mass of each end of X must be strictly positive. So that, that's, that's, that's the statement. All right, so this is, uh, the reason why I put this is just to say that indeed we get more more precise uh, of course uh, i mean we get a more precise um uh inequality and um, all right so uh, uh, then now i want to explain i mean just uh, in in more more um i want i want to to, to explain the, the just what what's going on i mean the previous uh, slide i think was quite technical so here, uh, uh, what, what we state is a non-stretchability uh, stretch, st stretchability uh, principle in the sense that suppose that uh, the ADM mass uh, is, is non-positive and uh, the scalar curvature is uh, non-negative everywhere and uh, is strictly positive in this region. And uh, then, uh, there then there exists a constant R, uh, which depends only on the uh, well, positive uh, lower bound of the scalar curvature here, and uh, plus the distance between those two boundary components, such that the distance 
between um, well, this boundary and the boundary of the manifold. So, uh, in other words, this that I called L uh, must be at most R. So that's so. In other words, uh, if you um, if you know that uh, that uh, you know that, that there is a that there is a let's say. Um, um uh, uh that the, the there is a region of uh of uh, of a certain width uh with scalar curvature which is uniformly positive and moreover you know that the scalar curvature is globally non-negative then this gives you an upper bound of, for the distance between the boundary of x1 and the boundary of x so that's that's the that's, that's the statement okay um now um uh, so, so, so now I, I, I want to also, and, and this statement actually is again this uh, really, um, re, re, this is really the the the, uh, the spin version in a sense of of the, the of the statement of Lesur, Unger, and uh, and Yao. Now, uh, um, all right, uh, then. Uh, uh, we have a second statement, uh, which is well, um, take uh, well, um, uh, take E uh, to be an asymptotic Euclidean end uh, with the property that the mass uh, is non negative. Uh, and then uh, there must exist a constant R, uh, which depends only on, on the geometry of. Um, of the asymptotic Euclidean end uh, with the following property. So if M uh, is any n-dimensional uh, Riemannian manifold, uh, uh, okay, without boundary that contains uh, the end E, uh, then uh, there, must, there, there must exist a, a constant, uh, say, and, uh, well, and, uh, and a neighborhood such, such, such that uh, in, a, in a R neighborhood, uh, that I drew here, such that in our neighborhood of E, uh, at least one of the following con conditions must be violated. So either the closure of U uh, is metrically uh, complete, or the scalar curvature is greater than zero, or U. So, so in other words, what happens is that either there is a point of incompleteness in, in, uh, in the closure of, of the uh, of the R neighborhood, or the scalar curvature becomes negative some, somewhere, uh, or U becomes no spin. So that's that's, that's the, uh, the statement. And uh, all right. So now, um, and and then and then from this actually, uh, so the, the the idea here is the following: that uh, if you take, um, if if so, the idea is that I mean, first of all, the main example, of course, is is a I mean, the, the way to think of it is again, what happens with the partial space of negative mass. Uh, I mean, and and the in of course the main the main in, anyway. So and, and then uh, uh, and then uh, the, the intuition is is the following thing that uh, if you start with something with uh, uh, with uh, negative mass, uh, then the hypothesis of the positive mass theorem must be uh, violated in the R neighborhood around E, uh, where R depends on the geometry. And uh, so, and then of course from this you can you can you can deduce the the uh, the um, the uh, positive uh, mass theorem with arbitrary ends. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, now, of course, this holds for, the, the, but but this actually again. Uh, so notice that uh, our uh, this first of all in the spin setting this was already known, uh, but our statement is actually <clears throat> is is more is more refined. So the the main point is that uh, is that you really uh, it's 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 something quantitative. So that's that's the idea of our statement. So if you start with something which has negative mass, then you can find a number such that uh, you know if you if you in a R neighborhood of of this asymptotic Euclidean end, uh, so either I mean if you go, I, I mean if you assume that the manifold is spin and the scalar curvature is, is non-negative, then 
you 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 really uh, um, yeah, you get a point of incompleteness, and this is what happens in, uh, of course, in the in the case of of uh, um, um, uh, 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 of, of a Schwarzschild space with uh, uh, negative mass. Okay, so this is. Uh, this is the idea. Now, I think, I mean, I want to give an idea of the proof, but I feel like my time is almost, I mean. Uh, we have a few more minutes. If you want to um, talk a little longer, that's okay. Yeah, but it, it would be really too long, I think, because okay. I, I mean, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, so the, the, the idea here is that actually what we do is to localize the, the, uh, with a method to for you know and and uh, using using uh, Calias operators and uh, well this is uh, and 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 this actually this actually um, well, maybe uh, so the, the the main idea I mean now if you uh, just look, look looking at the picture so the so the the main idea is is that uh, under under these conditions, uh, um, I mean, you want to uh, basically blow up uh, a potential at a certain distance uh, in, in such a way that uh, I mean, anyway, it's it's a, it's a, I, I think I think it's uh, it's it's really uh, it would take too long to to I mean, if you want to know details, you can ask. I can tell I can tell, but it would take it take a little bit too long to. Uh, to 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 go into it. However, here the may, maybe what, what I want to point out is actually that this theorem B. Uh, I mean, basically, uh, as I as I was mentioning before, uh, theorem A. So the idea is that 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 if you have if you have uh, you know uniformly positive scalar curvature on on a certain um, on a certain region, then you, you can you can blow up a potential. Uh, this is true uh, also for for, for bands. Uh, so the but here actually you start with a situation where the scalar curvature is non-negative and possibly zero everywhere. So you're not assuming positivity anywhere. And uh, and 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 actually here, uh, what what we do actually we use uh, uh, the the um, I mean a certain. Uh, Poincare inequality in, in the in the Euclidean end uh, to to uh, to construct the potential. So that's that's the I mean the idea. Then again, uh, it's I think uh, yeah I, th I think it's uh, yeah I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm already for, 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 you only require your neighborhood to be spin, not the whole manifold to be spin, right? The, well, well, uh, no. But the point is that is, is that of course, uh, yeah, you require only, only 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 your neighbor. I mean, the asymptotic Euclidean end is for sure spin, and then you 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 just so that that's why we formulated it like, like like this actually. Yeah. So so yeah, that's right. But on your picture, there is also some region which kind of not flat and which is not U and is uh, right, and you don't have to be spin. Out outside of of U, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's, huh, right. that's amazing. That's amazing. So you completely localize in you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes. So. Well, that's amazing. And the way I understand it is a little interesting. Yeah. Well, I think I'm sort of. Uh, I think I. Thank you. I think I'm finished. Yeah.